So guys, today I've got a very interesting meme to talk to you about. An interesting meme. Kind of cultural memetics, something that's appeared in the consumer culture that is kind of strange and it kind of illustrates a couple of interesting things that I already kind of predominantly philosophically thought about with regards to, you know, masculinity, femininity, androgyny, hermaphroditism or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, and it's, so if you go on the social media app Snapchat and you go onto the reels of Snapchat, what you start to see and what appears are these like kind of storyboards of kind of social consumerist crap that people consume and they're like, oh, this is amazing, you know. And then like people like consuming this kind of, oh, what did uh, uh, this certain celebrity do at the Met Gala? Oh, you know, and then like all of this other stuff. And then, and of course you get these weird TikTok, weird TikTok shit that comes up as well with it. But the most interesting thing I saw is this. There's this specific topic that is continuous on this real thing, this social reel on on Snapchat is um, this thing called the e-girl. And we all know what the e-girl is if you want to go into the memes, you know. It's this the, the girl who is lost and alienated in the modern world. So therefore she just exists only to play video games to fulfil the dregs of society of young men who have no ambition or desire by being explicit in the way she represents herself online, all this stuff of crap, right? But this thing is really interesting because what there's this trend, kind of this fetish trend that seems to be going on of these kind of young women dressing up in kind of male superhero outfits. And I was looking at this and I was thinking, what's going on here? So, these women are obviously, you know, being flirtatious, dancing, doing all this type of stuff, but also at the same time being dressed up in like a Superman outfit or some other kind of male masculine hero, which is a representation of the modern gods for the consumerist culture, right? Modern male gods in which these kind of supposedly these young guys worship when they go and see these films of Marvel and DC and all this type of crap, right? So, this is kind of interesting because it, it illustrates, there's a, there's a few things that this illustrates. The first thing you've got to think of is, why is this a fetish for these men mostly who are watching these videos? And two, what is the purpose of these modern gods of consumer culture? Marvel, DC, DC, Marvel Universe, superheroes, magic powers, all this stuff, stuff, right? Because that's what it is. When you go to the film, when you go to the theatre, you are going there to experience a religious experience. You're going there to have a religious experience. It's a ritual. You're going there to be ritualised into an archetypal motif, an archetypal story and scene and play, which then affects you. Obviously, you know, from my humble opinion, none of these Marvel films are actually going to achieve that for you because these are shit films. These are badly made films with poor narratives in them, right? But, uh, you know, obviously famous films in which people, in which, you know, the film industry is known for as have obviously achieved this sense of amazement for people because they get emotional when watching these films, they get inflicted with the archetypal storylines in which play within the film and then become ingrained into their mind because they are responding, they are getting their catharsis, they are, and at the same time because these films are usually objectively either good or bad, they have this um, kind of collective response and it's all got to do with the experiencing the true emotions of the human condition and that being a shared experience. That's what this kind of religious experience of the modern culture is, where you go to the theatre, you go watch these films. Why are you watching them? Even if it's for an atheist who's like, oh, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God or anything. Why do you go and seek out this kind of experience when going to the theatre or going to watch a film or a certain type of film about a certain type of subject that is very 
Um, maybe it's about love. Maybe it's about redemption. Maybe it's about you know any of these things. Maybe it's about meaning. Maybe it's existential. You go in there to have a religious experience because you go in there to be affected by the film, right? So that's on one side of it. But then when you look at this now, when you look at this thing, and then you 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 kind of think of you think to yourself, okay, so where is man going to now? He's modern man and meek men of society today are ingraining themselves into the consumer culture of religiousizing these pathetic gods of entertainment such as Marvel and all of this crap and they religiousize these characters right so they you know they dress up in these uniforms and they go to these films and they're like oh the new Marvel films come out oh I can't wait you know and they're like they're like oh I can't wait to like fucking watch this film and then so they, you know, they religiousize the whole experience. Of course, it's a film. It's, it's the it's the theaters. But you would think they would be doing this on the basis that it represents a masculine archetype, a masculine sense of self, right? A repository for the masculine. All these certain male superheroes, that, you know, they're really, you know, they they represent these. They're my hero type of thing or whatever the fuck, right? Like. Because there's no other representation in society for these, for the consumer to, to have a, to have this kind of encouragement or motivation or, or kind of diligence towards a certain type of male virtue. So they look at these, 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 these made up movies and they're like, oh, this is what I want to be type of thing. Or this is the type of thing I look up to because he represents his strength. He represents... Fortitude, which, you know, isn't represented by anything else real in my society today Because our society is weak and all of this um, And then But that's not the case Because you then have these women These young women Dancing around In the Pretending to be the male heroes In which these people look up to in the, in the theatres and they find it attractive, and they find it a fetish. Uh, they, they they develop a fetish behind it. So what does that say? It's so strange. Why are there these people looking at these women dressing up in Spider-Man uniforms and going, "Oh yeah, that's fucking sexy. Yeah, oh that's hot." You know, it's like, what's going on here? I thought these, like, like if it was a real. This is the thing, this is the thing where it's like there's this fluidity of course, this 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 breakdown of gender roles and and, and um, gender structure. And this is the true androgynous meme. This is like uh, the androgyny of everything that is and exists today. Is that there is no true value structure. There is no true principle in any of these things in which people entertain themselves with and believe are is true. In this postmodern world, everything is androgynous, everything is enmeshed, everything is coiled together in some sort of weird mess. The woke soup, the woke smoothie, um, and it kind of illustrates it there that man is in a very strange situation, modern man anyway. Especially the, by the fact that he's being, he's developing a fetish for these strange superhero, male superheroes, which they go and see and watch, which they enjoy, but then they're fetishized through this weird trend, mimetic trend on TikTok, TikTok and Snapchat through cosplay of women dressing up as male superheroes which they then find attractive so what does that fundamentally say about modern values today it says a lot of things but it's like everything is existent in a degeneracy of kind of not hedonism but kind of like 
nihilism because there's no like structure to anything. It doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no structure, you know. Because even even for the reason of like these mythologies, the the modern inter- the modern equivalent of the Greek mythology is the Marvel superhero type of thing. Even though there's people who, who kind of like watch these films and look up to this type of thing, um, you know, even though they might be atheists and say, well, I don't believe in stories like the Bible or anything from the Bible, but, you know, you go and watch a Marvel film and you believe it as if it's, like, true and you react as, as if it's, like, as if you're having a religious experience. But it's to, it's to kind of say that, you know, the the foundation of why people do what they do is obviously off kilter and it's not really existent. The value system or why people say they perceive things in the way they perceive them isn't really honest. So just interesting. I thought I'd just make a quick video about that because it kind of ties into the thing I was saying about androgyny and gender fluidity is that at the end of the culture, at the end of civilization, you get to a point where everything becomes androgynous. And gender roles are broken down. And when gender roles are broken down, an understanding of your purpose, or at least your base purpose, of what you're even supposed to try and do, even in a world where, you know, masculinity, and the principles of masculinity and femininity are not even taught or understood, anyways, you know, causes this confusion and this misunderstanding of why people do what they do. And I think that's a pure example of it. A very strange example, but a pure example. That man is fundamentally at his base level, modern man, of a certain generation, of a certain type of people, of Western society mostly, are being dragged down into this anima matrix in which the one thing that they fundamentally do love is the succubian lust of the feminine within the matrix itself. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below. What do you even think of this? This is a very strange thing I've seen. So it'd be interesting to see your thoughts on it as well down below. Uh, Make sure to subscribe. Check out My Arm Society if you haven't yet. Book in a free consultation call to figure out and find out what that is all about. Because a lot of people have been asking questions like, what is this My Arm Society? What is it about? Is it like an occult secret group? Freemason group? Like, just find out. You'll find out if you do a free call. And then you'll be like, oh, this is interesting. So make sure you sign up for a free call with that. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so just a quick update on My Arm Society. We have sold out on over 50% of the seats. So if you still want to get involved, book in a free consultation call with me down below. I'll run you down with what it is all about, or me or one of my colleagues will do so, and we can see if you are a perfect fit to the program. So I look forward to talking to you, and I'll see you on the inside.